Hi, and welcome to the 14th video in this C Sharp for Beginners tutorial series. So in the last couple of videos, we have looked at some different kind of loops. And today we're going to be looking at the last kind of loop, which is actually just the while loop. Uh, so very similar to the do while loop, but this one will actually check the condition before entering the loop. Very similar to the for loop, how it always checks the condition before even going in. So let's actually go ahead and let's take a look at the while loop. Um, so what we've noticed is with the do while loop, it always executes uh, the code inside the block uh, at least once, and then it kind of goes and checks the conditions and will start to loop. Uh, so the while loop is actually just written while, and then we have our condition, and then we have our open and closing curly brackets. So the while loop actually will check the condition before we go inside the loop. So uh, let's actually do a little uh, example here. So let's create a string and we're just gonna call it uh, in, uh, in, or actually str input. And we're gonna make that to our console dot read line. So we're gonna input a, uh, we're gonna read an entry from the user. And we're gonna say while the uh, string input dot to lower, because we always know that we always want to, because C Sharp does case sensitive comparisons, uh, we just wanna convert whatever the user enters into all lowercase. And we're gonna say while the string input to lower is not equal to the word exit. All right, so while our input from our user is not equal to exit, we are going to stay inside the loop. So here we can actually say um, a switch statement here. Uh, so we're already kind of looking into a very, very similar example to our menu here. Um, and then here we're gonna say um, our switch is gonna be based on the string input to lower. Let's go ahead and let's just have a case here. We're gonna have a case of just hello. We're gonna have very, very simple cases here. We're just gonna have cases of hello, and then we're just gonna say hello. Uh, are you? Or actually, hello. Welcome to my application. And then we're just gonna break right after that. And let's do a case of um who am i kind of like the classic command line who am i we're going to say console about right line uh, we're just going to reply to that is a great question we're just going to do a very simple uh switch statement with some breaks here and uh, let's just go ahead and let's do a default we're just going to say console right line um, let's just say command not recognized and perfect uh, and then we're just gonna have to break out of here and then the only thing that we need to do actually is going to be let's add another case here. And let's do the case of exit. And we're just going to break here. All right, so we have our while input here. Uh, so let's actually just go ahead and let's just display something to the screen here of console.writeline. We're just gonna say, welcome to the menu, enter hello or who am I or exit. 
All right, so once we have all that here, so let's actually go ahead and let's just run this code here. And what we're going to do is we're just going to say, welcome to the menu, enter hello, who am I, or exit. Uh, so let's enter hello here. Now, as we can see, we've actually entered a infinite loop. And this is because uh, in comparison to the do while, in the do while, because we know that it's ex gonna execute at least once, what we typically do is we just kind of ask for our input string inside of the loop and everything works great. Uh, but the only thing that happens here is we actually always need to reprompt for our uh, string here at the end. So this way we get a new entry and then this way it can check again and again and again. So what we actually could do here is in our old example, we needed that case exit. So this way the command not recognize would show up, but we actually don't need that in this situation because we are always rechecking it. So here we go. So let's actually try this again. So let's enter in the word hello. We get hello, welcome to my application. Uh, who am I? That is a great question. And if we do exit, it exits out. We actually do not even see the command not recognized, even though exit is not a option here. And that is because in the do while loop, um, the way that the code would work, and we could set up the do while loop in a very similar way, um, but there's really no point in asking for some things if we already know that the code is going to execute once. But the way that this works is we grab our, our menu selection right before we go into the loop. The loop then checks the condition to see what the entry was. And if it exit, we don't even go into the loop. So we never execute anything in here. If it's equal to hello, then what we do is we go inside the loop. We go into the switch statement. We actually check what it is. We output it. And then we go ahead and we grab the input one more time from the user. It goes in and checks if it's exit. If it's exit, it will exit out. If it is not equal to exit, it will again go into the switch statement and just keeps looping. Uh, so these are very, very handy again for uh, menu, uh, menu selection. As you can see here, the menu selections were very, very easy to code with a while loop. While loops are again very um, useful as for the same reason as do while loops. If you don't know the amount of iterations that someone's going to have to do, if you're reading in a file, um, if your increments are going to be potentially different steps, uh, it's definitely very handy to use a do while loop or a while loop. Uh, the do while loop will again always guarantee that first execution of the loop. Whereas the while loop, you can actually skip that first execution and never go into the loop uh, if that is what you need. Uh, whereas the for loop is you have a predetermined amount of times of execution. And we will actually see in the next video uh, in the series uh, that we can actually use uh, very similar to, to how we break out of a switch. But in the next video, we will see how we can break out of loops. Um, or actually continue and skip uh, certain parts of our loop iteration. So be sure to stay tuned for that as well. If you guys have any comments or questions on this video, please let me know down in the comments section below. Uh, this is actually almost the end of the beginner series. We're almost done all the beginner topics, and then we're going to be looking at a little bit more intermediate topics uh, with different kind of objects and classes. Uh, the more object-oriented programming topics. Uh, so if you guys have any questions or comments, again, let me know in the comments below. If you guys have any um, questions regarding you guys would like to see a video on something, also let me know down in the comments below. Please hit that subscribe button and that like button, and also hit that notification bell to be notified when that next video comes out. And I will see you guys on the next video.